as you can tell by the title, is my holiday room decor video. I have been looking forward to filming this video ever since I posted my last year's video. I've, I think this is my fifth year making DIY room decor. Uh, and honestly, looking around my room, it's mostly just DIY decor that I've done from previous videos. So I hope you guys will enjoy the DIYs. If you do, please give this video a big thumbs up. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Christy Ann. I hope you'll subscribe. It's that red button below. And without further ado, let's get right into the video. This DIY was inspired by cones that I've seen at Anthropology, Target, and literally so many other places. So I'm using two paper mache cones that I picked up at Michael's for this, but you could also use styrofoam cones or even make some yourself out of some cardstock. And then for the wool, I ordered this super bulky beautiful merino wool off of Amazon so I will link that below in case you guys want to get the same one. Assembling these cones is super simple. I just took my hot glue gun and added some glue to the base of my cone and then added my yarn and then every couple inches I added a little bit more hot glue and then attached more yarn and I did this as I went up the entire cone until I got to the very top and then I added a little bit of extra hot glue at the top just to make sure it was extra secure. But I left little gaps between the yarn to create some texture. And once I made my way all the way to the bottom of the cone, I went back up again in the opposite direction. And then I did one more entire round of going down the cone and then back up once more. These are obviously cute as is, but if you wanted to take it a step further, these little stars are great. I found these at Michael's and I just took some chalkboard paint in an ivory tone and painted them. So you could paint these in any color you want to and you can also do the cones in any color you want to, but I really loved the more modern look of the cream on cream. After they were dry, I took the stars and put a little bit of hot glue on the backs of them and then attached them onto the cones. They're super simple, but I feel like they look like they just jumped out of an anthropology catalog and I'm absolutely loving it. So excited about this next DIY. I did a similar DIY for my last year's Christmas room decor video and I'm doing another one this year because I'm so obsessed with these deco foil transfer sheets. So I ordered some of these hot melt adhesive sheets off of Amazon and they are incredible. To start off, I made a design in Photoshop and then printed it out. After that, I taped my adhesive sheets down over top of my design and started tracing the letters onto the parchment side of the sheets. Once I was done tracing out all the letters, I used an X-Acto knife and cut the insides of letters like O and A out, and then went ahead and cut out all of the letters. So the pillowcase I have here is from Ikea. I love their pillowcases because they're very affordable, and I love that this one was a blush pink, which matches my room theme perfectly. So I laid this out on my floor, and you can't see it here, but I have a wooden cutting board inside of the pillowcase. You want a really hard surface to iron onto. I made the mistake of using a towel the first time, so I laid out all of my letters and then covered them with a piece of parchment paper and started ironing them down with my iron set between the cotton and wool setting. And I would say I ironed each section for about a minute to really make sure that they adhered. And once I was done, I waited until they were cool to the touch before taking some tweezers to remove the parchment paper. This whole project is seriously so satisfying. The shiny stuff that's left behind is the adhesive and that's what's going to attach onto the foil. So then once I had all of those removed, I laid my gold foil on top of the letters and covered it with another piece of parchment paper and ironed again for about a minute per section, making sure to press down firmly so that the foil attached really well. And I forgot this step, but it's also helpful to take a soft cloth and rub over the foil after it's cooled for about like 30 seconds 
to make sure that the foil attaches to the adhesive. So I waited about 10 minutes to let my foil cool before removing it, just to make sure that it stuck properly. The first time I made one of these pillows, I made the mistake of not waiting long enough and then the foil lifted in a couple places. So it's definitely best to wait a little longer and make sure you get good results. So after it's cooled completely, go ahead and remove your foil. And if there are any areas that don't cover completely, you can go back over them again with the iron and the foil and just repeat the same process. Honestly, I am so happy with how this pillow turned out. I only wish my first attempt looked as good. This DIY was inspired by a million different pictures I saw on Pinterest. So I knew I needed to do my own little spin on it. So you can find these little wooden houses literally everywhere. I got them from a bunch of different places and I will try to link as many of the ones that I have here below as I can. But basically what I did was I chose a theme that I wanted to go for to match my room. So I chose some different shades of pink and ivory and gold and started painting away at my houses. And having a good, good time. And I love the effect of these even when they're just painted by themselves. But if you guys know me and if you've been watching me for a while, you know I couldn't just stop there. So I had to add some glitter. So what I did was I took some white glue and worked in sections adding some glue and then sprinkling on some of this beautiful iridescent glitter that I got from Michaels. After the houses were completely dry, I added a little bit more glue onto the roofs of the houses and then sprinkled on some of this plastic artificial snow. Along certain areas, I added a little bit more and kind of pushed it into the glue so that it would look extra thick. And then to make them look a little bit more Christmassy, I took some of these doll wreaths that I ordered on Amazon and I added on some ribbon bows. So I made the bows with some really thin ribbon and made a bow initially with a longer piece of ribbon and then pulled and tightened and pulled and tightened until the bow was really, really tiny. And then I just cut off the ends of the ribbon. And then I just added a little bit of the artificial snow that I added to the roofs of the houses using some glue. So then to finish off the houses, I attached the wreaths with some hot glue. And then for a little bit more decor, I have these little miniature brush trees that I've added around. I got some of these at Walmart and some of these at Joanne's Craft Store. I love how these turned out and I love that they're super customizable and also they're really inexpensive and you can continue to add on to them every year if you want to. I definitely encourage you guys to try this out and make your own little Christmas villages. Baby, this year is just gonna be red. This next one isn't really a DIY, but it's so cute. I wanted to show you guys anyways. This was inspired by a picture I saw on Instagram. So what I did is I took some flocking powder and you could also use artificial snow from a can if you wanted to. And the wreath that you see here, I picked up from Michaels for I think $6. So to start off, I just made sure that all of the branches were fluffed. And then I went ahead and spritzed my wreath with a water bottle and made sure that it was damp and took a kitchen sieve and added my flocking blocking powder to it and then shook that over the wreath. So after you have a nice layer on the wreath, you just wanna go ahead and spritz it again with some more water and then let it set to dry. The next step is super simple. I just took two long pieces of ribbon in two different widths. And side note, I picked up this ribbon at Walmart actually. It's like this blush pink satin ribbon. Back to what I was saying, I took the two pieces of ribbon and I made them extra, extra long because I want this to hang over and down the wreath. And then I took a long piece of the wide ribbon and then turned that into a floppy bow with two short ends. And this is going to go on top of the two long strands of ribbon to look like it's all one part, but it's actually three individual parts. So I just attached it onto the wreath and then hung them on my doors. I personally love the look of two simple wreaths next to each other. I think it just adds such a nice, elegant touch touch to any space. Da, 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 oh, oh. Da, 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 da. Our Christmas memories. 
These ornaments were inspired by pictures I saw on Pinterest of similar looking ornaments and I thought they were super cute. So I'm just rolling out some air dry clay that I picked up at Joanne's craft store, but you can get this pretty much everywhere. I'm rolling it out to about one fourth to one eighth of an inch thick. So you want it pretty thin. And I'm taking a wooden snowflake that I got at the craft section of Joann's and I'm taking a foam snowflake that I got at a craft store a few years ago. But basically you just want something to create some texture on your clay. So I'm taking those and pushing them into the clay with this mortar and pestle. You want some type of weighted object to really push them down into the clay and transfer over your design. And then I'm taking a star cookie cutter and lining it up to cut off part of the snowflake. So you have like part of the snowflake on the star and then part of it off, if that makes sense. And I'm doing the same thing for the other larger snowflake with just a larger star. And I grabbed these stars from Michael's, but you could use whatever kind of cookie cutter you wanted for this. And then I also have a little ornament shaped cookie cutter that I did without a design. And I'll show you what I'm gonna do with that after. So then to hang your ornament, you're gonna wanna make sure that you have a hole in the ornament before you let it dry. So I'm taking the end of a paintbrush and pushing that through on one of the corners of the stars and then the very top of the ornament and making a little hole. So then I'm just peeling away the excess clay and you can roll that up into a ball and use that for more ornaments or save that for another craft project. So then with the ornament cut out, I'm just taking these little stamps that I got at the dollar section of Michael's and spelling out merry and bright. The possibilities are kind of endless with cookie cutters and stamps or any kind of Christmassy textures that you wanna use. Then you just wanna let them dry after a day or so, they're ready to be painted. If you wanted a more natural looking ornament, you could totally leave them as is, but I went ahead and took some of this gold metallic paint and I painted in the snowflakes. Soon everything is Christmas. And then on some of the ornaments, I took some white glue, coated the ornaments, and then sprinkled on some clear glitter just for a nice iridescent effect. Then to finish off the ornaments, I took some of this really thin ribbon and threaded it through the hole that we made earlier, and then just tied it in a knot so that it can be hung from a branch or from anywhere you'd like to hang it. I love these ornaments so much. I think they're super cute, super customizable, and also really inexpensive. I hope you enjoyed the DIYs. Let me know in the comments below which one was your favorite if you have a favorite. Mine is definitely the Christmas Village. I think it is so cute and what's great is that you can add on to it every year. So I hope you guys are all enjoying your holidays and having a really great time with your family and friends. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Bye guys! Merry Christmas!